Hi guys and welcome to DIY Ideas and welcome to a new basic video. I will show you crocheting 101, everything you really need and maybe you've seen other videos like this on my channel here. I really like to do these every few years basically just to do the, the, basic, the basic things you need to know um, and to have it all, you know, new. Today I will show you this tutorial with the soft alpaca wool from Rico Design. The color number is number three. It's 50 grams and 125 meters. And these are all the, the main facts, basically the main details of the wool, so you can kind of understand the wool a little better. Here you can always also find uh, with which crocheting hook you're supposed to crochet this. So here this little um, this little needle here with the hook is a number four and the other one is knitting needles. So you should use a size that is around that size that is referenced here on the package. So this is a number four and so you should use something around that. If you take a smaller hook than that it's going to be much tighter. It's going to be tighter knit and if you use a bigger one it's going to be a little looser. So here we're going to use a number five crocheting hook. It's something that I like to use. Um, everyone obviously has their personal favorites and this is mine. And everyone likes their, their look to be a little different maybe. The size of the crocheting hook kind of really changes the look of your, of your crocheted thing, of your scarf or whatever you're making. Um, so yeah, just make sure you choose what you prefer. Okay, so here you can kind of see the yarn. It's um, kind of twisted within itself and has a little bit of, of smaller threads coming out. It's very typical for an alpaca wool. And it's, yeah, that they have, yeah, they look, it just looks like wool, very typical, I would say. And with that, they're just very soft, they're very cozy. Okay, and that's kind of everything about the wool, about the yarn. This is my crocheting hook. Most of them have a little indication on the back of what size it is. I have a size number five. It's a hard plastic crocheting hook, but you can have them from plastic or tr transparent plastic or metal. They kind of differ most in the weight. And this one here kind of has a rubbery grip here at the back so that it doesn't slide out of your hand. They're a little wider and the metal needles are usually a little heavier and maybe a little slicker and people obviously have their preferences so so try some out and and see what you like best for yourself. So how do I start crocheting? You either start with chain stitches or with a magic ring. Um, if you want to see how to make a magic ring, you can go find that on my channel as well. So we're going to start here with a, some chain stitches. So we're going to start with putting the thread kind of into my hand, then wrapping it around these two fingers. And in between, there's kind of the, where the threads cross. In between, I will go with the crocheting hook and pull it through. I'll put away the fingers and then kind of pull the thread tight. I will show you again how I do this. So, you put the thread into your hand, you wrap it around your two fingers. There you have the crossing. I kind of hold it with my thumb, and then with the hook, I pull through the thread from the back side. I take out my fingers and I push away the crocheting hook, and then it tightens the, the knot. And then I pull on the longer thread um, until the noose kind of closes. So, then I have the hook here, it's on my, the thread is now on my hook, and now I will take the thread onto my hand so that I can later crochet very easily and, and continuously. The most classic, the most typical thing is to put the thread in between your pinky and your ring finger, and then kind of wrap it around your index finger. Okay? So. We have the thread very stable now between the hands, between the fingers. Exactly. So here you can see it. 
So this is kind of my way of, of holding the thread more or less tight, depending on how I need it for my crocheting style. Um, and with that, it makes it easier for the hook to actually grab onto the thread. So look, if the thread is just hanging loose here and the left hand is doing, isn't doing anything, then I have problem getting the thread. And if it's just loose on my hand like right now, it's going to be much, much harder. So I need a little bit of tension on the thread. And so here I'm holding the loose end kind of with my thumb and other fingers just so I have a little more control about what I'm doing, basically. So here's the needle with my right hand and with my index finger, I have the thread on tension, but it's not, not too tense. Um, it obviously needs to be able to come through. And so I take the hook, I wrap it around and I pull the thread through um, my noose that, had, that I had just made. And this is my first chain stitch. So we'll show this again. We're holding it with the thumb and the ring finger. And then with my index finger, I have some tension on the thread. And with my right hand, I go pull the thread with a little hook that's on the, on the top and pull it through the stitch. So I take the hook I go through, I kind of twist it around a little bit so that the little hook on the top can grab onto the thread and then I pull it through my, my little stitch, my little hole. So you can kind of see like little V's almost that are more or less in each other, within each other. So if you just look at this here between my two thumbs, you can kind of see, yeah, a little V structure basically. And so we'll continue doing this. Just go get the thread and pull it through. You can kind of see that I'm not holding onto the loose thread at the bottom anymore, but my bottom and the middle and ring finger are holding onto the stitches that we just did. And that's how I'm holding it stable right now. Okay. And this is how you make chain stitches. You can see it's all very even, um, this, they're all the same size. And that's because the tension is always the same. So what do I do if I want to do something else than chain stitches? We'll look at some single stitches now. That's like the, the easiest way um, to make nicer patterns that are interesting. So we will skip this first stitch and we'll go into the next one. We'll go through with the hook. So we're now going from right to left before we were going from left to right. So we poked the hook through, do the same thing, we pull the thread through the stitch and now we have two little things, we have the two threads on the hook, we'll do it again, we'll pull the thread through, we will now pull it through both. So now we did a single stitch. Then we're done with the first single stitch and we will do the same thing again. So we'll actually go to the next stitch. We will go pull the thread. Now we have two on the hook. We will pull the thread again and we will pull it through both. Okay? So we'll do it again. Push the hook through. Pull the thread the first one. And then get the next thread and pull it through both of the threads that you have on the hook. Maybe you saw that my index finger is kind of moving back and forth um, with the motion, just so that I have the exact right tension that I need. So when I go and try and get the thread with my hook, I put the index finger a little further away so there's a little more tension so it's easier for me to grab the hook. And then when I'm actually pulling the hook, I move my index finger a little closer so that there's so that that's easier for me to grab um, the thread and pull it through. That's something that you will do automatically with a little bit of practice, with a little bit of experience. Um, everybody kind of does it a little differently, but I, I feel like you will figure this one out quite quickly. On the top here, you can kind of see stitches as well. It's little Vs, basically. Um, it's always these two parts. Um, I'll show you again here between my thumbnails. This is the V. That's one stitch. 
it has these two sides kind of. Okay, we will do this again. So we'll go into the stitch, pull the thread through once, have two on the hook and then pull it again through both. And we'll do it again, go through the stitch, pull the thread through once, have two on hook, and then get the thread again and pull it through both. Okay, this is the same pattern always and these are called single stitches, single crocheting stitches. We're gonna do this until the end of this row. Okay, all single stitches, go in, pull the thread, have two on the hook, pull the thread again and pull it through both. And now here, we're already at the end of the row. This is the last stitch, the first one that we did. So we're gonna go in again. This one's a little tighter. Get the thread, pull it through the stitch, and then we have two on the hook and pull it through both. So now this first row of single stitches is actually done. How you can kind of see, you can see the stitches here on top. That's also where you would go in to um, do the next row. So we're gonna do one chain stitch just so we get some height. Then we turn it around so that we are doing it from right to left. We'll go into the first into the first stitch, we will pull the thread through, we have two on the hook, and then get a new thread and pull it through both. Push the hook through, get the thread, and then pull it through both. Push through, get the thread, pull it through, and then pull it through both. Push through, get the thread, have two on the hook, and then pull it through both. And this is the same pattern always, um, no matter how complicated your pattern is, this is always a single stitch. So you can kind of see now, um, I kind of have double of the first row, so you actually move quite quickly. Um, you move along quite quickly and it's, um, it doesn't take that long to crochet like this. We'll finish up this row here, the second one. Okay, we're almost done here. This is the last one. So I, I did these last few ones a little faster. So generally you can do this super quickly if you have a little bit of practice. And it's a simple and quick technique. And it's, it's a technique that you can also use for a whole scarf, basically. So if you wanted to continue this on, you could make a whole sh scarf out of this, a really nice, nice cute pattern. It's a simple technique that I showed you in 10, 15 minutes. You can learn this super quickly. There's a lot more patterns, of course, and a lot more stitches that you can learn, that you can combine with one another, and you can make, um, yeah, obviously much more complicated patterns. Thank you for watching DIY Ideas. I hope you really liked this video. If you would like to watch the more tutorials, please visit my channel and subscribe for free. That way you'll always be the first one to be informed about new videos. Please share this video with your friends and see you next time!